Lord, today we recall your faithfulness to us. We thank you for being with each one of us moment by moment. And today with all our hearts we praise and adore you. And Lord, we are happy that we can come in spirit and in truth. And we cry out that you are holy. You are almighty who was and is and is to come. And we humbly invite the divine presence of the Holy Spirit to fill this place, to fill our lives. Because in your presence, there's fullness of joy. In your presence, there is healing. And in your presence, there's hope. And in your presence, there's victory. We commit this worship into your loving hands that will be drawn closer to you and that our faith will be lifted up in a wonderful way. And this we pray in Jesus' most wonderful name. Amen. Today is the World Day of Prayer for Children at Risk. One child representative from each of the children department will be praying acts, adoration, confession, and thanksgiving. May I invite the representative to come forward as we pray. And I'd like to invite the congregation to kneel as we seek the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly, our gracious Heavenly Father, we praise you for your goodness and faithfulness to us. Please forgive us for the times we have hurt you and others with our words and actions. Help us to forgive those who have hurt us, that we may experience your peace and joy. May our words and actions always reflect your love and kindness. Thank you for loving us so much, for listening and answering our prayers. Thank you for all the blessing you have given us, for family, friends, and a loving home. We pray for children and young people here in Singapore and all over the world who are in pain from neglect and abuse. Give them courage and peace. Deliver them from their pain and enemies. Help them to feel your never-failing love, to know you are their best friend whom they can rely on. Fill their lives with hope, a hope in your care and love, a hope anchored in your promises. May they trust you and find strength and refuge in you. Help us also to be your ambassadors, to be a friend who listens, encourages, and who leads them to you. Bless us with wisdom to recognize and know how to reach out to children and young people who are hurting. Bless the good work of Viva, which is the Volunteer Independent Visiting and Advocacy Service. May it continue to help children and young people who face violence, abuse, neglect, and the impact of broken relationships and homes. We place all these requests in your hands. May your will be done. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the prayer of each of the representatives from the children division. We pray for the children at risk. The Lord, you will be with them in a very special way. You will rescue them from the issues and the problems and the challenges they are facing. And may they find peace in you. May they know more, more about Jesus. May you open doors for them, Lord, throughout the world and also right here in Singapore. This moment, we would like to pray for Pastor Bana in a very special way as he delivers the bread of life. May you annoy his lips so that the words he speaks will be bread for us so that we be drawn closer to Jesus and to one another. And may we take time to commune with our children and with you so that we can be and we will not let anything interrupt this connection and this communion with you. For all this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 1, verse 32. 
he will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Happy Sabbath to all. Thank you, Pastor Bayou, for giving me this opportunity to share the Lord's message here in Ballastier. I, I think I've said maybe at least once a year, at least, um, due to my work, due to my availability as I'm always traveling. Um, usually it's my wife and my children who are here in Ballastier and thank Ballastier Church for providing and guiding and caring for them here. But interestingly, today I'm here, but my wife is not here. <laughs> She is in the Philippines attending her nephew's uh, graduation. But we want to assure you that we still love one another. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the, before I share the message today, which is entitled Great in His Sight, I was thinking whether to share this or not, but I decided to because it is something very good to share. For years, the Union Territory, the Southeast Asia Union country, which covers seven countries, we have never really achieved a number of baptism which is good. There are many ways to measure the health of the church or the health of the work. It's not only baptism, definitely. There are many ways. The involvement of the people, the, the joy of the people, and the unity of the church. But I would like to just encourage all of us in a Territory of 250 million people in 2018. Never we reached the 3,000 mark baptism. And last year, the Union Territory that consists of Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, and what's one more? Brunei. There were more than 3,000 people won to the kingdom. Can you say amen to that? And we praise the Lord for all of you working together as we prepare souls for His second coming. Let us pray before we begin this message. Father in heaven, we want to tell you, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, all that is within me today. Father, hide me behind the cross of Jesus. Whatever things I share today, it will give glory and honor to your name. Bring us nearer to you, we want to surrender all our worries, our tiredness, our challenges to you because your promises are true and your goodness never fails us. Lord, thank you for this time that we have in worship and as we pray in Jesus' name, amen. The first mentioning of the word great is found in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 16. It says, Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And he made the stars also. It's amazing to know that that great light is shining in Thailand at this moment. And that same great light is shining in the Philippines. That great light is shining in PNG. Sister Gia. That is how wonderful our great God is in terms of giving us light. And it's also mentioned, for example, when Eliezer visit the house of Laban to look for the wife of Isaac. And he told the house of Laban, said, the Lord has blessed my master greatly and he has become great. Notice, English teachers, there's a semicolon there. I'm not an English teacher, but he says there's a semicolon there. He says, and following that, he has given him flocks, herds, silver and gold, male and female servants and camels and donkeys. It's going to get interesting here because I want to tell you today that the silver, the gold, the camel, the maidservants, the donkeys, those are not great. The greatness is not there. It's not in the camels. The greatness is not in the donkeys. The greatness is not in the gold, brothers and sisters, or not in the flocks. I want to tell you today, this is probably the text that I want to expound a bit with all of us here today. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 20, verse 21, that the Bible speaks, Pastor Bayou, but in a great house, I believe that we are in a great church today. I believe that as a world church, Seventh Adventist, we are in a great church. 
There are not only vessels of gold and silver. I believe, Elder John, you want to be that gold of the church. You want to be that silver for the church. But, in the verse, there's always a but. Also of wood and clay. Some for honor and some for dishonor. You may be working for a great corporation, but you may not be great. You may have great parents, but you may not be great as a son or a daughter. You may be in a great church, but we may not be great in the sight of God. Some of us may be gold, some of us may be clay. Some of us may be living in honor to the Lord, and some of us may not be living in honor to the Lord. But friends, I thank God for that hope of conversion that we can have as individuals for God. In the book of 2 Timothy 2.21, it says, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the later, he will be a vessel for honor. And it is my prayer today, at the end of the day, all of us here today, all, lahat, all of us here today will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. That is my prayer. In fact, I can end my sermon here, Pastor Bayou but I will have to fulfill my responsibility to bring and to share it. Because as, as preachers, the first person need to be blessed is you yourself. And brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, this is going to be a very simple message. I'm going to tell you what greatness is not, and later what greatness is in the sight of God. I want to tell you that greatness is not inherited. Yes, I believe, we believe, we always hear preachers saying, you are born for greatness, but there's always potential in us. Some of us, perhaps, have great parents, but they were not born great. Some of people, their parents are not great, but they become successful and great in the eyes of God. So it's not something inherited, it's not something that we are born with. Next Greatness is not income. Remember that, brothers and sisters. It's not how much we earn. It's not how much we have. It's not greatness in that sense. It's not how much we have in the bank or how many houses that we have. Ah, listen. This is very important. Greatness, Pastor Mark, is not talent. Because someone can be very good at doing something but he's not good at being something. You can see many athletes, they're very good at certain things, but they're not a good father, they're not a good mother. It's not talent. Talent is important, but it's the being is more important in your life. Greatness is not popularity. It's not the number of likes you have. It's not the number of, of people that, your, the number of people who admire you. That's why we see there are many singers out there. They were once popular, but they're not great anymore. Either because of what they did in the past. So it is not about being popular. Being great is not about being popular, friends. But it's about being what is good in the sight of God. Greatness is not cheap, Pastor Bayou. It requires time. You're going to see that it requires some sacrifice in the part of its people. It's going to require some lack of sleep. It's going to require some early morning waking up. That's not cheap. It's going to cost something. It has cost a lot Jesus to be great when he came down from the splendor of heaven to die for you and for me. Greatness, Pastor Chunru, is not immediate. It's not going to, doesn't mean that you come today to church and the next, when you come out of the door, you'll be great. It doesn't make that way, it's not that way. I remembered in college, if you remember the person called Kenny G, some of you, maybe that generation, I was impressed with him. So in college, I decided to, I was not able to buy a, a saxophone, so I borrowed a saxophone in college and started start to learn how to play the saxophone. And my housemate said, Abel, you sound like a goose who is going to die. <laughs> and because of his word, I stopped playing, unfortunately. But Pastor John, I know you play this, right? Violin. Do you remember the first time that you, the first lesson of violin? Uh, my, my little daughter is here, but she, she started violin. I, I, I have to say there's a, a lot of squeaky sound there. 
And, and greatness is about going through the squeaky stages in life. And some of us, our marriage are still squeaky. It's, it's moving, but we need God's help in those areas. It's not immediate. It takes time to be great in the eyes of God, brothers and sisters. Greatness is not common. It's not something that we always hear about great people. That's why not everyone is great because there's certain things and we're going to learn why there's not many great people around. It's not something that will have approval of everybody when you want to be great in God's eyes. Some people will envy you. Some people will not like it, brothers and sisters. I like this. Greatness is not easy. I'm going to tell you something that a lot of great people I see, great Bible people, great people in their faith, went through a lot of hardship, then there is greatness in them. Nothing is so easy. They went through a lot of difficulties, challenges, then they became great. I heard of a story of a millionaire in Texas. He brought his business friends to his house in Texas, and there's a swimming pool in his house. They were having a nice barbecue, Pastor Chen Rong. And they noticed something in his swimming pool. Sir, we noticed there are many crocodiles in your swimming pool. Oh yeah, I'm always encouraged when there is courage in people. And I always offer this to people. If there's anyone who can swim across that swimming pool until the end, I will give him whatever he wants. So of course no one wanted to get it. So they walk to the house and as they were in the house, they heard something splashing in the pool. Splashes. And they saw, they went out, they saw someone that could swim faster than Joseph schooling. Faster. And the crocodile was like trying to bite and eat that man, but he reached the end. And that rich man, that million, and the man came out of the pool and the rich man said, wow, I've never seen something like this in my life. I just want to know what you want. I will give it to you. And the man who swam across the, the river, uh, the, the swimming pool said, I just want to know who pushed me in the river, <laughs> in the swimming pool. When, uh, greatness is not being born. It takes time. It's not easy, Pastor. I, I wonder how it was eight years ago or ten years ago when you first preached. It takes time. It's not easy. And a lot of people I see go through hardship in order to be great in the eyes of God. You may say, oh, greatness is only talk in the world, in this perspective of the world, about being able to work in good cooperation or being able to own a lot of things. But the Bible talks about greatness. It is something biblical. For example, John the Baptist in the book of Luke chapter 150 says, John will be it's something in the future tense. He was not great at the time, but he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. It's very interesting here how greatness is associated with alcohol, if you're abstinent with alcohol. And it says, Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. If you line up all the great people in the Bible, John's the greatest. But it is interesting how the Bible describes greatness how the Bibles look at greatness and how the Lord looked at greatness in Matthew 18, 1 to 3. It says here, at that time the disciples came to Jesus, who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child. I thank the young people for that wonderful prayers. I was touched, encouraged by the prayer. I'm also encouraged by your prayer, Elder John, but those children is great in the eyes of God. And Jesus said, As surely I say to you, unless you are converted, which takes time, repentance is immediate, you, you repent, but the conversion takes time, become like little children. The Bible says, very interesting, the first will be the last, but the last will be first. Be like the servant. That's why it's not going to be easy, Pastor John Rong, to be last sometimes. But how does the Bible talk about greatness? The great people in the Bible. I cannot go and miss what's happening in Hebrews 11, where it talks about heroes, the God holds of fame, the people that, that have that high accolades given by God in Hebrews chapter 11. It says, by faith Abel, by faith Noah, by faith Abraham, by faith Enoch, for example. 
And how did the Bible define greatness in these people? Very interesting. Here it says, in Hebrews 11, 36, 38, it says, Still others had trial of mocking and scourging. How many of us have experienced that in our lives? Yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn into two, oh, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. I like that very much, brothers and sisters. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. Pastor Mark, no big budgets for them. No high ratings in Instagram. No reputation, no build, building, except a single-minded pursuit to achieve the will of God and to live their lives in total dedication of service to Him. Well, I, I believe that there are some people who are given greatness in big capacities and some in smaller capacities. Some of you may not have ever heard of some pastors who, who pastor churches in, for example, in Africa or in Vietnam, but they are also great in the eyes of God because they are doing something for the Lord with their heart. I remember of a wonderful story called name Baruch in the Bible, a friend of Jeremiah. Jeremiah did not have many friends. It was a set ministry. Baruch had good intention. He wanted to good, do good things for the Lord, which is good. Baruch, if you have a son or you're going to have a son in the future, name him Baruch. Not Barack Obama, yeah, Baruch. And the Lord says in Jeremiah 45, verse 5, He says, Baruch, and do you seek great things for yourself? I remind you, brothers and sisters, do not seek great things for ourselves. We can be great in the sight of God, but do not seek great things only for yourself. Do not seek them for all. Behold, I will bring adversity on all flesh, says the Lord, but I will give you your life to you as a price in all places wherever you go. That's amazing when God will give you if that greatness is for the Lord and not for you. Of course, in the eyes of the world, those who are on top are the one that is controlling or those who are in charge are the one that is superior. But in the eyes of God, not among you, on the contrary, he who is greatest among you, let him be the younger and he who governs as he who serves. So power comes with serving in the eyes of God. How many of you who are boss here, who, who leads a corporation, do you expect that people under you to greet you good morning first or you are the one that greet the person good morning first? It makes a difference there. I was very encouraged to hear of a story when a flight was delayed and then many of them have to, because of the, the, the delay in the flight, they have to catch another plane for those who are in transit and there was a long line and there was two ladies Cutting the line. You know, if this is in Singapore, it's to be dangerous. They cut the line. And then they go to the front. Everyone said, oh, you're cutting the line. You should go back. It was a chaotic experience at that moment. And lo and behold, the pastor, there was a pastor in the front. And the pastor told the lady, you can take my line here. You can take my space and I will go to the back to take your space. Immediately, it's like the Spirit of God was in that airport. I'm not too sure if I can do what that pastor did. You know, being in Singapore, I would say, hey, this is the line, man. Or, you know, one time. I, I guess that, 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 that couple was from China, mainland, and they were trying to cut my line going to that train. I said, oh, <laughs> so, you know, you know but, but it's different when the person is putting the rest first. Brothers and sisters, there are two opposite words that you hear a lot in your life, in your school, in your ministry. The word down and the word up. The word down is always associated with losers, with people who cannot achieve. But the word up is associated with people who are achievers, people who are heroes. For example, the word downscale. How many of you have downscale recently? The word downcast, the word downgrade. How many of you have downgraded recently so that you can spend more time with the Lord? The word down market, if you are in stock exchange, down market is a, a negative word. How about downhill? Ah, this one I don't like, down payment, I don't like. 
But people like to be associated with the word up, upscale, up plus, upgrade to a better place, up market, uptown, and that word, Sister Janine, Janelle, atas. It's something that I hear. I'm a Malaysian, but I seldom use that word. But when I come to Singapore, people say, oh, very atas. And who names the doing seven down? Seven up. So there is a thing in the world perspective. But what about, and you know the term packing order, right? Uh, Filipinos, can I see your hands today? Oh, malamang. And in my country, Malaysia, we call this sabong ayam. Sabong manok, manok sabong. And people fight. They fight with the chickens. Pareho den? The same. And if you notice chickens, brothers and sisters, when they peck, you, 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 you put ten chickens together and they peck each other. You notice if, if you've seen chicken, if, if some of you have seen chicken before. If not, maybe it's just the chicken in the supermarket that you see. But friends, the chickens you observe, I, 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 I have villages in home. If you notice the chicken, they would fight with one another and the strongest would be the front, the second would be the second, the third and the ten. And when the ten person, they don't have anyone to peck anymore. It's about dominions. It's about who is in charge. That is the world. And brothers and sisters, there was a, a husband that went back to his house and said, Wife, my boss said there's 100 workers in my company and I am number 100. I'm very sad today. And my, the wife said, Don't worry, dear. As long as you're in this house, I will always love you and you're always the number two. And friends, the world looks at it differently. But we, in the sight of God, the last will be first to be humble ourselves in ministry, in church, in our family. We humble ourselves. I like what Ellen White beautifully said in this quotation in the spirit of prophecy. It says here, Those who reveal the meek and lowly, spirit of Christ are tenderly regarded by God. They may be looked upon with scorn by the world. We who are humble in the eyes of God, the world may look at us differently, but they are of great value in His sight. Great value. Not only the wise, the great, the beneficent will gain a passport to the heavenly courts. Not only the busy worker, full of zeal and restless activity. No, the poor in spirit who crave the presence of an abiding Christ, the humble in heart, whose highest ambition is to do God's will. At the end of the day, we forget everything what I said, just remember, it is humble to do God's will in our lives, desire ages. And friends, the second thing, I'm, I'm almost ending, you know, give me another 10, 15 minutes, Pastor Bayou. The second thing that Jesus alluded to about greatness is the matter of commandments. I'm not preaching about sinless perfection here. I'm not preaching about the last generation theology about perfection here. But I'm telling you what the Bible says about greatness with commandments. The Bible says in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, 19, you are very familiar with this text. It says that whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I'm very encouraged people like John Wesley, like Finney, who look, the law is righteous, the law is beautiful, the law, because they are converted when you have a regenerated heart, the law becomes beautiful, the law becomes wonderful. And the Bible says, great are those who follow those commandments. Sometimes there is a survey out there that says that 40% of the people, the Christians, they cannot recite or remember all Ten Commandments. That's sad. I used to teach a class to young pastors about Ten Commandments. And even some pastors, they cannot recite all the Ten Commandments. I'm talking, focusing on the moral law here, not on the ceremonial law. Francis, I know some of us will say it's difficult, Pastor. There's just some circumstances make it difficult for us to fully abide in that beautiful law of God. And you are not alone, I tell you. We go through Romans 7. I call this the wretched man that I am chapter. 
Because Paul said that the good things that I want to do, I don't do. The evil things that I should not do, I do. Oh, what a wretched man I am. And we go through that as normal people, as imperfect people. But as God generates our hearts, as we look and focus to Jesus, who is the source of greatness that can give us that assurance to follow Him, I thank God there is Romans chapter 8, brothers and sisters. Because in Romans chapter 8, listen, this is an important text that sometimes we just forget about it. It says here, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I like that. If we are in Christ Jesus, there's no more condemnation. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit, I, this is my prayer later, that the law of the Spirit will fill us of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. I just want to give an example here. I'm sure young people, you know about the law of gravity, right? It's always there. 24 times 7, 365 days. If you, if you don't believe, please jump, on, jump down from the building and test it for yourself. The law of gravity is there. It's like the law of sin and death. There was a writer that I admire. He was asking people to hold that Bible high. And as, he, and as this congregation hold that Bible high for five minutes, they're okay. For 10 minutes, their hands are getting lower. For 15, 20, 30 minutes, they're tired. We struggle like that. It is not that the Bible is getting heavier, but we are getting weaker because of the law of gravity. It's the same thing, the law of gravity, which is the law of sin and death, is always there. I believe it's no longer there I trust and it is my prayer when we get to heaven, there's no more death and suffering. But we thank God there is this thing called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that overcomes that law of sin and death. In other words, for example, there is these things in science called the law of buoyancy. You, put, you, you have a balloon and put helium gas in it. It's very light, but it could fly against the law of gravity. You could see the Boeing 7 A380, Singapore Airline, I purposely put Singapore Airline, not Malaysia Airline there, is able to take off against the law of gravity because of the law of aerodynamics. It can go against the law of gravity. It is that law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ that can make us overcome us, the blood of Jesus overcome us to love the law, to appreciate it, to see sweetness, and that law, brothers and sisters, may that law of spirit of Christ in Jesus in us will help us to be great in His sight. Because the Bible says, great are those who follow and keep the law. Let us be teachable and willing to be corrected. The mouth, it says here, that the Lord will give us the tongue of the learned it's never-ending learning process for each one of us how to speak. He awakens me morning by morning so that we have the ears to learn, Isaiah 54. Continue to have the tongue of learn and the ears to learn, brothers and sisters. Do you know how many people who are in jail today because no one corrected them? Their daddy did not correct them when they were young. You know how many people are struggling today because no one correct them? Let's continue to be able to open correction in our lives to be great in the sight of God. I want to close in this story. It's 12 plus, Pastor. I'm not a movie fan. Mom Carmen, I'm not a movie fan. But on the way, on a very long journey last year from, from Auckland back to Singapore, New Zealand, I, I, I came across of this movie, oh, basically it's not a movie, for goodness sake, it's a documentary, and, and I said this is the best movie I've ever seen in my life, you know, it's a documentary called Free Solo, it's about a man who practiced four years to climb that mountain without a rope, without a rope, and it was so steep, and I basically cried at the end of that movie, brothers and sisters, at the end of that documentary, because I saw that, that determination, I saw his girlfriend, waiting down there because if anything happened 
to this guy, that's the end of that relationship. He will definitely die. But at the end of the day, he was able to reach that peak because of his hard work, determination, because he's never give up free solo. If you have chance, go back and watch it. Uh, not today, but tomorrow maybe. Free solo is there. But friends, I serve a God. A God who goes and climbs that mountain called Golgotha. A God who is called great because He was humble enough to leave the splendor of heaven. He was called the highest because He put Himself down so that you and I can be saved. He did not turn back. He moved forward to that mountain called Golgotha for you and for me. Some of us may be looking forward to that great Singapore sale. I look forward to that great day when that great God named Jesus will bring you and I home to that great place called heaven. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. It is my prayer that you and I will continue to have Jesus in us because he is greater and the source of greatness comes from him. I would like to call Uncle Dono who is going to sing about the greatness of God. Remember, we cannot do this alone but by God, nothing is impossible. Brother Dono, please sing that song. God is holy. And He is the source of greatness. Can we say amen to the Lord? Let us pray. May the song that we have just sung 
will be so real and meaningful to us, to our church, and to our families. It is our prayer today. May the love of Father, which is so great, will be in us. And then we also will be sharing that greatness with the people around us. May the love and amazing grace of Jesus Christ will shine through us because there's nothing in us without you. And may the sweet Holy Spirit will convict us, will help us, will comfort us that we'll be able to be great in your sight. Today, we are reminded that you are the great physician. And maybe there are amongst us we need that divine healing from you. Be it physical healing. Touch the person in a special way, Lord. Maybe some of us here are in need of spiritual healing. We are reminded that we want to be the vessel of gold. Help us, O oh Lord, to grow in our faith with your help. Maybe some of us here today need a special healing to be able to be ready when Jesus comes. And when the roll is called up yonder, our names will be there. As we leave this place today, keep us safe and secure as we lean on the everlasting arms of Jesus. And this is our prayer today. In Jesus' most wonderful name, Amen.